So let us take uh, two inputs and two outputs. Let us take two inputs and two outputs. Uh, for this uh, example, we actually don't have graphical output because we said uh, graphing this uh, graphing this will be uh, very uh, impossible to imagine, right? Uh, more than two dimensions. Because remember, when we plotted this, we neglected the input because we were only mapping the output. When we plotted this, uh, when we plotted this, we completely neglected the output because there was only one output which was uh, the sales and everybody was told that they must uh, achieve a sales of 10 lakhs. So we were able to neglect uh, the output dimensions here. We were able to neglect input dimensions here. Can't be done in this case. There are two inputs and two outputs. So every sales office is given some budget and the budget is not constant, right? Uh, they are given different budgets. Uh, they are given different teams, different uh, uh, number of people in the team. And they are told, well, try to get as much sales and as many leads as possible. So even the sales is not kept constant at 10 lakhs. We didn't do that here. Everybody is able to achieve, everybody is able to achieve whatever sales that they can achieve and number of leads. So this is a more generic case where there are more inputs and there are more outputs, not a single input case with multiple outputs and vice versa. Okay, so let us look at uh, the formulation for this, right? Let us look at the formulation for this. And once again, as I said, we don't have uh, a fallback of graphical output here. We, we must rely on solving an optimization problem for each of the sales offices and check whether they are efficient or not efficient only from the optimization value and uh, can't verify from the plot because we don't have a plot. So first of all, let us look at the formulation uh, of the uh, problem. Let us look at the formulation for sales office one. Uh, so what are the I's and O's and X and Y's? There are two inputs and two outputs. So I one one input one for uh, DMU one. What is that? That is three lakhs, 300,000. What is second input for first sales office? 13. What is output one for sales office one? It is 11 lakhs and 10,000. Okay. What is the second output for the first sales office? It is 15. Okay. And what are going to be the decision variables? Input weights X11 and X21. They are going to be input weights. Output weights are going to be Y11 and Y21. Those are going to be the output weights. Okay. How are we going to calculate the efficiency? efficiency for the first sales office is weighted output. So uh, weighted output. So Y11 O11 plus Y21 O21 divided by X11 I11 plus X21 I21. Okay. And you know the values of I's and O's. You don't know the values of these four because these four are your decision variables. These four are your decision variables. Okay. So, uh, and uh, uh, so uh, what is going to be the linear programming problem? Linear programming problem is going to be maximizing the numerator. So maximize this, normalize this to be equal to one so that we don't end up having a, a ratio in the objective function. We are normalizing the denominator to one. That is going to be the first constraint. This is going to be the objective function. What are the other set of constraints? Using the weights for DMU1, none of the other DMUs, none of the DMU should get a efficiency more than 1. So E1 less than or equal to 1, E2 less than or equal to 1, E3 less than or equal to 1 are going to be the constraints. 4 and 5 also. Let us pick the uh, efficiency of uh, 2. How is that going to be calculated? The data is going to come from the second sales office, but the decision variables are going to come from the first sales office's choice. So this is going to be, uh, sorry, uh, output weight Y11, but the output value will be for the second DMU. Output weight will be first DMUs. Output value will be second DMUs. 
So this is 2 2 second output for the second DMU. Similarly, weights will be coming from DMU 1. So I 1 1 uh, sorry X 1 1 but it is going to be I 1 2 second uh, DMU input for second DMU. Similarly, this is X 2 1 plus I X 2 1 multiplied by I 2 2 I 2 2 because it is the second input for the second DMU. Now this has to be less than or equal to 1. How will we linearize it? We will linearize it by taking the denominator to the right hand side. So we write the LP for the sales office. As I said, it is going to be maximizing the numerator, right? Maximizing the numerator, which is this guy here. Maximizing the numerator. And you know that uh, the output values are 11 lakhs and 10,015. You know that we have already seen this, right? Already seen this, already seen this. Uh, normalizing the uh, denominator, normalizing the denominator is the, the budget and the, num uh, the team size. So this is the budget value for sales office one, this is the team size for sales office one. And then the constraint uh, constraint saying that uh, the efficiency has to be less than or equal to 1 for everybody. First sales office reporting a sa uh, efficiency of less than or equal to 1. Second efficiency less than or equal to 1. Third efficiency less than or equal to 1. Fourth efficiency less than or equal to 1. Fifth efficiency less than or equal to 1. Using the weights for the first sales office. Using the weights for the first sales office. And what are the decision variables? Decision variables are essentially these input and output weights for the first sales office because this problem is actually being solved by the first sales office. Does it make sense? You can go over this slide a uh, couple of times to understand, right? Couple of times to understand. Okay. Now, let us look at the Excel output. So now we have the Excel sheet available here to us. This is the data. There are two inputs. Budget and team size are the inputs. There are two outputs, sales and number of leads. So we have taken the full data, right? We are trying to for formulate the LP for uh, sales office one. Okay. So these are the input weights and output weights, input weights and output weights. Okay, so what is this value? This value is x11, this value is x21, this value is y11 and this value is y21, right? So these are your decision variables. These are your decision variables. Okay, what is the objective function? Objective function, uh, let us come here. What is the objective function? Objective function is the uh, maximization of the numerator, maximization of the numerator, weighted numerator, right? Actually numerator, it's already weighted. Okay, so uh, uh, what is the objective function? Let us click that. So output weights, uh, output multi output weight one multiplied by the output one plus output weight two multiplied by the output two. So some product function. So this is going to be the objective function. This is going to be the objective function, right? What is the first constraint? First constraint is the normalization constraint. Normalization constraint tells you that uh, I take the input values input weight multiplied by the input 1, input weight 2 multiplied by the input uh, 2, that has to be normalized to 1, that has to be normalized to 1, okay. What is this constraint? This constraint tells you that uh, using the weight for uh, sales office 1, sales office 1 should not get an efficiency of more than 1. So this is the uh, numerator which is the weighted output has to be less than or equal to the weighted input weighted input, right, weighted input, okay. So here it is uh, second uh, DMU, the numerator for the second DMU, numerator for the second DMU has to be less than or equal to the denominator for the second DMU using the weights for the first DMU. This is the third DMU solving its own problem. Third DMU numerator, third DMU numerator, weighted numerator. And uh, this is the denominator, which is the input. Fourth DMU numerator, fourth DMU denominator, 
फिफ्थ डीएमयू न्यूमरेटर एंड फिफ्थ डीएमयू डिनोमिनेटर राइट सो लेट अस लेट अस सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम ओके लेट अस डू इट दिस टाइम प्रॉपर्ली ओके आई विल गो टू सॉल्वर आई विल एक्चुअली आई विल एक्चुअली रीसेट दिस ओके लेट लेट अस रीसेट दिस सो लेट अस सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम so why where is my objective function my objective function is located here what do i want my excel to change my excel can change these values what are the constraints constraints how do i add constraints first is a normalizing constraint the left hand side has to be equal to the right hand side add this okay and then all these guys have to be less than or equal to these guys and then i'll say okay i will obviously uh, make the constraints non negative use simplex lp and hit a solve button okay so now what is the result result is this dmu sales office 1 has reported an efficiency of 0.65 Okay, reported an efficiency of 0.65, and these are the weights assigned by this DMU to achieve this efficiency of 65 percent. So, by its own calculation, using its own calculation, sales office one is not able to report an efficiency of one. We allowed the sales office to assign any input weight and any output weight, which, by the way, it is trying to do. Notice, notice once again something peculiar. uh for sales office 1 the sales look at the sales they are actually the lowest they are actually the lowest sales office 1 has reported a sales of only 11 lakhs whereas all the other sales offices have reported definitely higher sales definitely higher sales clearly sales office 1 is going to say you know what the sales is all overrated Uh, so you shouldn't assign too much uh, importance to this what do i mean by not attaching too much importance to this the weight the output weight should be as low as possible what is the minimum value of the output zero so sales office 1 is trying to be clever sales office 1 says let me assign a zero weightage to output number 1 but even after doing that it is able to report an efficiency of only 65% it is able to report an efficiency of only 65% clearly it is not efficient clearly it is not efficient makes sense right okay now let us go to uh, formulation for 3 okay formulation for 3 same data data is not changed this is the same data right same data uh, these are the weights what are the weights first input third dmu second input third dmu first output third dmu second output third dmu right so these are your decision variable these are your decision variables these are your decision variables okay how do you calculate the objective function objective function is the uh, weighted output what is the weighted output uh, output uh y13 y23 are the weights and uh, o13 o23 are the actual output values 34.5 lakhs are the sales 12 is the number of leads generated okay 12 is the number of leads generated so that's your objective function which is maximizing the numerator numerator is the weighted output what is the first constraint normalizing the weighted input normalizing it to 1 so what is the weighted input input weight multiplied by the input for dmu3 input for dmu3 so input weight multiplied by budget input 2 multiplied by uh, budget uh, sorry team size the weight and uh, uh, input value has to be equal to 1 so this is your normalizing the input normalizing the input and now using the weights for dmu3 using the weights for dmu3 none of the dmu should report an efficiency of more than 1 that can be written as this okay so now we are saying uh, first dmu the numerator numerator is the weighted output weighted output using the weights of dmu3 but the data from dmu1 is the uh, numerator 
using the weights from DMU3, but the data from DMU1 is the denominator and uh, this uh, numerator has to be less than or equal to the denominator. Similarly, second DMU, uh, the, in, uh, the output weights will be used by, uh, 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 as they are for, for the DMU3, but the values, the value of the output will, be, will come from DMU2. Similarly, numerator, as a denominator, denominator is input weights for DMU3, but the input data for DMU2 and so on and so on, right? So, we want to still solve this. Let us solve this. Come here, go to data, go to solver, already formulated. Let us hit a solve button. Okay, let us hit the solve button. And now notice the objective function. Objective function value is 1. So when we give full freedom to the third sales office to pick their input and output weights, they are able to report an efficiency of 1. So using their own calculations, DMU3 is actually efficient. Notice smartness on part of DMU3. Right? I have, I have already, already always been highlighting this. DMU3 knows that the number of leads are actually on the lower side. 12 is only second lowest, second lowest, 15 is higher, 23 is higher, 20 is higher, right? So uh, DMU3 knows that it is not doing that well on the second output. So the best way to uh, uh, show yourself on the best possible light is to say that yeah, DM, uh, output number 2 is not important boss, number of leads are not important. How does that importance translate? Importance translates to output weight. Very cleverly, uh, DMU3 is uh, assigning a weight of 0. Right? You can keep doing this. Right? You can keep doing this. You can solve the DMU4 uh, problem. DMU4 problem. DMU4 problem. Right? DMU4. DMU4 trying to solve the same problem. I will not get into the detail. But I can show you that DMU4 is also able to report an objective function of 1. So uh, even DMU4 is efficient. DMU4 knows that it is the second lowest in terms of sales. Uh, the lowest was DMU1. Uh, DMU4 is the second lowest in terms of sales. So it is very uh, rationally de-emphasizing that particular output, right? That particular output. The weight for output 1 is very cleverly assigned to 0. But uh, whatever tricks that they play, uh, they are able to report a efficiency of 1. So that is how you uh, find out which DMU is efficient and which DMU is not. I have not solved all the problems. That's for you to do. Uh, but from the, uh, from the three formulations that we have seen, DMU4 is efficient. DMU3 is efficient. DMU1, however, isn't. DMU1 has an efficiency of only 65%. So clearly, DMU1 is not going to be on the efficiency frontier. So that's how you formulate the linear programming problem and solve them. We have chosen to solve them on Excel. Doesn't mean that uh, Excel is the only way to solve linear programming problems. But idea was to uh, draw conclusions from the linear programming problems. And we have done so for three cases, single output case, single input case, and a generic case where we had more inputs and more outputs. So let us end the session here.